1,697 people killed in India after being struck by lightning between March 2020 and April 2021. Lightning strikes kill more people than cyclones, earthquakes and floods every year. Surprised? As the earth heats up, the number of extreme weather events like heat waves and thunderstorms is also increasing. Warming adds to moisture levels in the atmosphere, not just in coastal areas, but also the Arctic and Antarctic regions. Lightning's interconnectedness with thunderstorms and precipitation makes it a direct indicator of storminess. This helps us observe changes in the global climate. Because of increased moisture levels, the number of cyclones have now multiplied. The last decade saw 33 cyclones in the Indian subcontinent, among the highest in over five decades. Naturally, when thunderstorms or cyclones increase, so does lightning. How does lightning strike? Lightning is part of what we call a convective storm system. What does that mean exactly? It means that superficial heating of the Earth leads to upward atmospheric movement, vertically transporting all the moisture in the air. After a cloud is formed, friction between ice crystals within them leads to an exchange of electrical charges. When the bottom of a cloud becomes too overloaded with negative charges, electricity courses towards a positively charged region on the Earth. In other words, we get struck by lightning. Since lightning is the first indicator of a storm, an increase in lightning strikes leads us back to increasing global temperatures, clearly reflecting the climate crisis we are living with today. Let's elaborate. Compared to last year, the areas vulnerable to strikes in India have increased significantly in 2020-21, a rise of 34% nationally. This puts our long coastline at a lot of risk, which includes Odisha, Andhra Pradesh and hilly regions of the Northeast. With one degree rise in temperature, there will be 12 times rise in the lightning. But the annual lightning report reveals 34% rise in lightning in one year. This is a matter of concern. States like Punjab, West Bengal, you know, 331%, 100% rise in lightning. But many states recorded less lightning. Less lightning because of the drought-like situation, a moist, not non-availability of the moisture. But those states have become hot spots. And next year, there is going to be more lightning in those areas where less lightning has taken place. In Uttarakhand, the forest fires that are increasing every year also add to the number of lightning strikes that the state witnesses. In 2018, the sky sliced open in Brazil. A single lightning bolt stretched for 700 kilometers from the Atlantic coast to Argentina. The Arctic region, where this phenomena should have been rare, is also witnessing more lightning strikes than ever before. Strikes have increased by about eight times in 10 years, from 18,000 in 2010 to 1,50,000 in 2020. During the recent heat wave in Canada, when the heat waves caused wildfires, the smoke released from them formed clouds. These clouds caused more lightning strikes, which reignited fires. This was a dangerous loop that lasted for much longer than expected. Lightning struck over 700,000 times in one night. Lightning strikes don't happen in isolation. They are a result of many climatic factors. One of the most important ones out of these is the Arctic jet stream. This is a band of winds that swirls around the Arctic region and keeps the cold weather of the Arctic intact. Since the Arctic is now warming thrice as fast as the rest of the world, the jet stream above it is becoming wavy. So, hot air from the continents moves upwards and cold air moves downwards. This has directly been linked to winter storms in North America and Europe. And who would imagine a heat wave in the North Pole? India is said to be the fifth most vulnerable to climate change disasters. This makes many districts prone to increased lightning strikes as well. Between 2012 and 2019, in just eight years, over 20,000 people were killed because of lightning. The lightning season in India starts in March and continues till October, becoming more intense during the monsoon season. Unfortunately, most deaths are reported in rural areas, where there are open spaces 
and farmers are tending to paddy fields even during heavy rainfall. Urban areas are spared not only because of a scarcity of trees and water bodies, but also because of better infrastructure like lightning conductors. While people might survive other disasters, lightning strikes come with a 30,000 degree Celsius temperature, 180 to 200 kilo ampere of currents, and 200 to 250 kilo joules of energy, making it impossible for any human being to survive it. This is equivalent to the amount of electricity a person consumes in India in three months. The global climate observing systems, uh, uh, which is basically led by the WM or the World Meteorological Organization, has listed uh, lightning as an essential climate variable. And this has been happening since 2016. And uh, so also there is uh, evidence now uh, to show that for every one degree warming uh, of the earth, uh, the, uh, the frequency of these lightning strikes is going to increase by 12%, which is a lot. And if we are looking at a warming of around 3% uh, 3 to 4%, uh, if we don't curb our uh, greenhouse gas emissions, then we are looking at an unprecedented rise in lightning strikes, and hence, which will obviously translate into economic losses, losses of human lives, etc. The seasonality of lightning has to be judged in every district separately and accordingly the lightning awareness, lightning training and lightning protection plan has to be implemented. A dedicated lightning action plan is required from NDMA. There is a guideline which has been issued in 2018 and ownership to disaster. We need states to own up the disaster. States have owned up, but below state, districts have to own up, blocks have to own up, villages have to own up. By 2100, lightning strikes will increase by more than 50% in India. In India, lightning strikes are not even considered a serious natural disaster as yet, but they are another reminder for us to understand the implications of rising global temperatures and take the climate crisis more seriously than ever before.